Before there was television, cable, color, or black and white, before even the rise of radio, there was the comedy of George Burns. The man with the cigar will be 100 years old tomorrow. He is physically frail now and was unable to attend a birthday party this week, but George Burns' comedic genius has stayed fresh from vaudeville to video, from the days of dragnet to the internet. Jerry Bowen reports on George Burns, an American institution, in tonight's Eye on America. Fairy tales can come true. What can happen to you if you're young at heart? His is the longest running act in show business. A, news, a newspaper woman called me up the other day. <clears throat> she says, Mr. Burns, is it true that you still go out with young girls? I says, true. She says, is it true that you smoke 15 and 20 cigars a day? I says, true. Is it true that you drink three and four martinis a day? I says, true. She said, what does your doctor say? I said, he's dead. George Burns has made it to a very old age the same way he made it through a very long career. He's never stopped working. When I started, I had no talent. I worked with a seal. I worked with a dog. I did a skating act. Burns started on the vaudeville stage, but nothing really worked until he met a jobless 17-year-old named Gracie. Gracie Allen. We had the grandest time. She gave definition to the word ditzy. Could you eat two big lamb chops alone? Alone? Oh, no, not alone. With potatoes, I could. You could? And Burns and Allen became household names across America, radio, films, television. Why, what beautiful flowers. Aren't they lovely? And if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have them. Me? What did I have to do with this? Well, it was your idea. You said when I went to visit Clara Bagley to take her flowers, so when she wasn't looking, I did. <laughs> You see, what made us a good team was that I had talent, but my talent was really off the stage. I knew exits, I knew entrances, I knew how to switch a joke, I knew how to write a joke. I knew how to do it, make it up, and Gracie knew how to do it. Life without is unpredictable. The thing that they did was very human. They hit a common denominator with their audience, which the audience immediately picked up. And of course, the timing was essential with it as well. It was a marriage on screen and off that lasted 40 years until Gracie Allen's death in 1964. George Burns' career went into a lull for a dozen years after that and then returned with his Oscar-winning performance in The Sunshine Boys. Knock, knock, knock. Enter! What do you mean, enter? What happened to come in? At age 80, George Burns made his comeback, and he found a new audience. Long before Tony Bennett was discovered by the MTV generation, Burns had won over the baby boomers and their children. He was God. Not, uh, not what you expected, huh? Burns had hoped to play Caesar's Palace on his birthday. I hope Caesar's is still there. But since a fall at his home, the entertainer's been in frail health, unable to perform. In a statement this week, though, he again displayed his wit. Musing on the right gift for a man turning 100, Burns suggested a night with Sharon Stone. And here's the best part. You got a head start. Here's In Hollywood, this is Jerry Bowen for Eye on America. If you are among the very young at heart. Happy birthday, Mr. Burns. Young Bob Schieffer, pretty funny fellow himself, will have the news tomorrow. For the CBS Evening News, Dan Rather reporting. Have a great weekend. Good night.